You know, as an Oakland Raiders fan, you pretty much expect the absolute worst to happen no matter what heading into uh, the upcoming fall season. And um, I got to admit, you know, when the Raiders had their draft class earlier this spring, I kind of had a hard time figuring out how exactly I felt about that because I didn't want to get too optimistic because in the past that's always been our downfall. You know, we finally, uh, for years in the post uh Gannon uh, era, we struggled to find a quarterback, and uh, along comes Jamarcus Russell with the answer to our prayers, and he ended up being probably the biggest first-round draft bust in the history of the National Football League. So heading in this draft class, you know, admittedly, I, I was kind of uh, expecting the Raiders to go for Manziel. I thought that had been the best option. He would have been the best fit for the program at this point. So when they uh, selected Khalil Mack as the fifth overall uh, first round draft choice. I was a little taken back. I thought maybe since you had Manziel on the table, that would have been a better choice in the first round. I didn't know his draft was going to fall as bad as it did. So with that in mind, you know, I was kind of upset. That is until the second round came around and picked up Derek Carr. Then I realized, okay, that's probably a much better overall bet, I think, in the long haul than uh, Johnny Manziel anyway. So, just looking at this NFL draft, the first two uh, selections in the 2014 draft, I mean, this could be, and I know I'm being way too optimistic here, but you know what, as a Raiders fan, that's all you have. That's all you can live by now, is just fanciful optimism. Is that maybe, with this draft alone, the Raiders may have picked their uh, defensive anchor for the next 10 years, and their offensive anchor for the next 10 years, all within, you know, what, 31 draft choices of one another. Uh, Khalil Mack, obviously, he is a, a great uh, outside linebacker. He, he holds, like, what, the NCAA record for most forced fumbles. So, obviously, he's a monster. Uh, he's going to be a great pass rusher. I think we need that, obviously. Uh, the area where the Raiders have really played horrifically, I think, is in the front trenches. And I think he automatically makes this a more dangerous defensive unit and improves them drastically. Uh, but, of course, I said the same about Rolando McLean, so what do I know? Maybe he'll be a, a big, fat failure, too. But I don't think that. I think he's going to be a, a very bad dude. He's very imposing. I think he's probably going to be a Pro Bowl uh, candidate player for from here on out, I hope. But Derek Carr, this is the guy that's a whole lot more interesting to me because when I first look at all these quarterbacks, uh, you know, you look at uh, Manziel. You look at, um, uh, crap, what's the name of the guy? Uh, Bortles, who's now going to be playing in Jacksonville and losing every game he'll ever play. You know, I kind of did not really look as Carr as being a long-term solution to the Raiders, but when you look at the system they have in place now with uh, Reggie McKenzie and this Dennis Allen offense, you know, it's clear that the entire time when they've been going through Carson Palmer and they've been going through Jason Campbell and they've been going through um, all these other players that really sucked, um, what they were trying to do is they were trying to find that really solid, stays in the pocket, deep threat, menace quarterback like Aaron Rodgers. We all know that's what uh, McKenzie's trying to do. He's trying to turn Oakland into uh, the Oakland Packers, the Green Bay Raiders. That's his entire scheme. You're seeing he's building up with uh, the offensive line. He's building up the defensive, uh, especially with the linebackers, building up the front. And, uh, you know, we've given him three years, and the results have been pretty turd-tastic. And, uh, I don't know, I think Carr, more than any quarterback they've had uh, since the McKenzie Allen era, is probably the best overall fit to be that Aaron Rodgers top quarterback where he can stay in the pocket and you have to worry about getting sacked every, uh, every other play. And, obviously, he's got good presence, uh, good targeting, uh, great precision. He can bomb it, good short run. He's a very intelligent quarterback from what I've seen. I had to go back and watch a lot of his uh, play at Fresno State. And to be fair, he was playing against, you know, San Diego State and Arizona State and all these other uh, uh, really lower-tier college football teams. But at the same time, you know, I just like his general movements. I think he's, um, no, I'm not going to say he's going to be a quarter, a Super Bowl caliber quarterback, but I think he's going to put this team on a winning path. Uh, the sooner I think the Raiders get Derek Carr in there and actually have him work in the field, the better this organization will be. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that later on with the whole quarterback situation in Oakland. But just up front, you know, with Khalil Mack and Derek Carr, that kind of renewed my faith in this organization because, you know, heading into it, I'm like, I just want to get Manziel. 
It's, there, there's so many core weaknesses on the defensive line, on the offensive line, but the secondary, I think, has really been the big problem for the Raiders. Like, since, you know, 2004, the problem has been you got a really, really bad uh, secondary with really bad cornerbacks and free safeties. So, basically, the Raiders get torched over and over again. That's been sort of a commonality. Well, one of two commonalities, bad secondary, bad quarterbacking. In tandem, I think, has really, you know, destroyed this franchise. So, you know, looking at, um, you know, what the Raiders did throughout the draft with getting uh, Keith McGill and Travis Carey and Jonathan Dowling, I don't think any of them are going to be huge long-term solutions. But, you know, they got to be better. And I think overall with adding guys like Justin Ellis uh, to the team and Shelby Harris, not going to be stars in any regard, but, you know, just the fact that you got someone who's at least quasi-competent that does have some upfront skills filling those holes and positions, I think, uh, gives you just a little bit of time to be optimistic. Like I said, I don't think any of those are going to be really huge name players. They're probably going to be forgetting and uh, playing in, uh, you know, St. Louis three years from now. But just having there is, you know, just stop gap until you can kind of improve yourself through free agency or a better draft next year. I think uh, it's, it's an improved team all around. And this is probably the best draft the Raiders have had in probably a decade, maybe a decade and a half. So I'm happy about that. Um, as far as the roster heading in, and I know we're still going through free agency. There's still some guys going to sign. There's still some deals going on. So it's a little bit early to kind of come out and say, well, the roster didn't like this. But we do kind of you know, have some leanings towards uh, certain players when they're going to be starters. When the Raiders signed Matt Schwab, I don't know where you were in America, where you were in Raider Nation, you're in Seattle, California, New York. You may have heard a, a very loud rumbling coming from the southeast. Well, that was me finding out about uh, Matt Schwab getting signed by the Raiders down in Atlanta and just screaming my head off for a solid hour because I could not believe this organization would take Matt Schwab, a man whose entire... Uh, Shtick as a quarterback last season was being called pick six. A dude that not only threw an interception, but interceptions leading touchdowns. That was his entire season in a nutshell. So this guy, despite how horrific of a season he played, they go out and sign him? You know, you get rid of uh, 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 Terrell Pryor. Okay, admittedly he wasn't a great and he wasn't a long-term solution in any regard, but still, if the dude could move, he, had, he was a threat in ways match Schwab is not and would never be so when I heard that I just felt like I wanted to explode this is just the, the general insane nonsensical like reverse Brewster's million uh, organizational management that has pretty much been uh, the Raiders uh, milieu for the last 20 years almost if Al Davis from beyond the grave is still running things um, so as soon as I saw that, you know, I figured they've got to go for Johnny Manziel. They got to go for a quarterback, some top tier early, because Matt Schwab is not going to be a long-term solution in any regard. And the thing is, yeah, I know he played pretty well in the past. He's had some good seasons. Overall, if you look at his career, he hasn't been a terrible quarterback. But just having a season that awful, I mean, this isn't Moneyball going on here, where the guy is you know going to re up and he's going to have to be forced to play better for his finances. You know, I don't think this is going to be his resurrection season. Um, just the way the Raiders are, they're very, especially with the McKenzie Allen regime, they're very hesitant to make changes. I think Matt Schwab will be named starter, unfortunately. But I think that uh, by the, uh, the quarter point of the season, by game four or game five, uh, Derek Carr will be named your starter. And uh, there's a very specific reason for that, and we'll talk about that when we talk about the upcoming season preview. So I think Derek Carr, he's going to be the uh, starter for at least, uh, well, more than half the season, I think, at this point. I think he's going to play a lot better than Matt Schwab, and then again, uh, my puppy could play better than Matt Schwab. Uh, Matt McGloin, I think he's kind of underrated. I mean, watching him play last year, I mean, he's got some potential, but he's just not going to fit in with this offense. He's going to get, uh, he's going to be playing for, I don't know, the Panthers or somebody next year. Trent Edwards, get, get out of here. Don't even bother. Uh, the question now is, it's not whether or not Carr will take over the mantle as starting quarterback because he's going to. I think the question here is how early before uh, Mr. Um, Carr takes over the mantle from Schwab.
So make sure we're still recording. Now I like going long with the ramps here and the battery usually runs out when I'm talking about all the things that uh, the Raiders have done wrong organizationally over the years. Uh, as far as running backs, I think they made a really, really bad call by uh, uh, keeping Darren McFadden on the roster. He's a guy who has been perennially hurt. You know, he, he's entertaining, but he's not a very good uh, cost-efficient uh, person to keep on the payroll. I like the idea of having Maurice Jones, Drew, and uh, the really interesting about the Raiders, if you look at their running back core, you look at guys like Marcel Reese, you look at uh, uh, Jamie uh, Olawali, you look at all these guys, even Jeremy Stewart. I mean, it's a very good core of running backs. Uh, the problem is uh, the front line is not opening holes for them, and they can't get anywhere. And obviously with getting uh, some of the guys up front on the offensive line, which has been a huge, huge, huge weakness for the Raiders for a decade now. We'll see what happens. But, you know, quarterbacks, Derek Carr, that's pretty much it. Running backs, I mean, they're very solid. Uh, whether they're going to get much yardage, don't really know. I think it's probably going to be a little bit below average compared to the NFL teams just because the L-line uh, isn't going to do that. So this team's going to have to focus on the receiving game. And the thing is, you know, for all the, the trash people will talk about the Raiders uh, in the post-Gannon years, their receiving core has always been really, really good. The problem is you never really actually had a uh, quarterback that could throw it to them because we had guys like Jamarcus Russell and uh, uh, Dante Culpepper. Dante Culpepper's mummified corpse going out there on the field. And Aaron Brooks, all these great quarterbacks who have no accuracy and can't bomb anything, whose best years were like in the late 1990s out on the field so even though we had some really good uh, receivers out there throughout the years they really didn't get much uh, accomplished well looking at the Raiders now I mean this is a really good core I mean I'm not saying it's the best in the league or even the best in the division well definitely not the best in the division but I'm saying just looking at the sheer talent there you guys like Daenerys Moore you got Rod Streeter uh, you got Jerron Kreiner you got all these really solid uh, receivers I think could be doing a whole lot more if the Raiders A had a quarterback worth the hoot and uh, be an offensive line that allows a quarterback more than a second to be in the pocket without getting steamrolled. So I think that's obviously a very underutilized thing, and I think a lot of uh, the success for the Raiders this year will hinge on that receiving core, which actually, of course, hinges more on the quarterback, which hinges on the O-line. And uh, tight ends, uh, Jake Murphy, David Osbury, both very, very good players, very underrated. The offensive line. Now, this is, um, I don't know, in some regards, you know, they played a lot better last year. They were better at uh, stopping the run game last year than they had been in, in many, many years. Um, not so much because of the offensive line, but more because uh, of a much improved uh, defensive line and uh, better linebacker core. But, you know, looking at the defensive line, that's still probably the Raiders' biggest weakness. There's no really big name players on it. I don't expect to get much out of Tony Bokstrom or Khalif Barnes. But, you know, if they just do like a, a sub decent job of protecting the quarterback, this should be an improved team. But we'll see. Um, I don't expect much to improve. I still think this is a huge, glaring weakness for the Raiders. But, you know what? I have hope. Maybe. Maybe they'll, they'll get uh, lightning in a bottle. Uh, the defensive linemen, really, they've improved with some additions like Justin Tuck, I think, is a great move. Uh, Lamar Woodley coming as a defensive end. Uh, of course, you know, you got Justin Ellis coming in as a rookie. It's not a, a great uh, defensive line, but I think it's a much improved one, and they're probably going to get a little bit more uh, production out of this. So, hopefully. We'll see there. The defensive line, I think, is way better than the offensive line, but you don't really need to tell you that. Uh, linebackers, obviously, huge improvement. Khalil Mack, everything's resting on his shoulders. Uh, but also guys like Kevin Burnett and uh, Nick Roach, they, they're they all right. I don't think they're they're great superstar players, but, you know, they get production. But, of course, you know, once you get the Mac Daddy on the field, that's what we're looking forward to see. If you can be that core anchor and really motivate the rest of this team, this should be a much, much, much improved defense. I'm kind of stumped, you know, as to whether the Raiders improved more defensively or offensively because with the, the uh, defensive backs, they're so horrible, and with the offensive line, they're so horrible that any sort of improvement, any way, shape, or form, might give them the advantage. 
So I'm not sure, you know, I'm kind of curious what you think. Do you think the Raiders improved more offensively or defensively this year? I'm still kind of on the fence. I need more time to kind of think it over. And, of course, it comes to defensive backs. Um, Charles Woodson, who was awesome last year, and guys like uh, Devon Branch, uh, DJ Hayden, Tywan Jones, who actually started off as a running back, believe it or not, as a two-way player. Um, like I said, you know, it's not – the great years. It's not 2002. It's not having Rod Woodson and Charles Woodson and all these other guys in the background. Even though you said Charles Woodson, which is awesome. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love that. He's one of my heroes. I mean, this is not a superstar defensive back uh, end. Not a great secondary at all. But it is an improved one. And you know what? Incremental improvements. I'm not expecting this to be a playoff team. I'm not expecting this team to really win the division or even be in the running. But just to go out there and, you know, kind of relive the 2010, 2011 years, to go 7 and 9, to go 8 and 8. If you go 9 and 7, that's like winning 12 Super Bowls in a row if you're a Raiders fan. Just getting above average to have more wins in a year than losses is like our golden uh, standard. That's our Stanley Cup. We want that. 9 and 7. That's the number we're aiming for. And I think with this secondary, I think we're closer to being a 7 and 9 and an 8 and 8 team than we are you know, the 4 and 12, 5 and 11 disasters we've had the last couple of years. And of course, uh, special teams, uh, really not much to say. Marquette King, especially Janikowski, decent. Well, not decent, probably the best in the league. What am I saying? That's pretty much the story of the Raiders. The best thing we have to look forward to all year is our special teams. Thank God I'm a Raiders fan. So just evaluating the roster, you know, like I said, there's still some uh, free agency going on. There's some guys who get signed at the last minute. All sorts of stuff, but just looking at what we have now with the draft and the early free agency choices, I think this team has improved clearly offensively and improved perhaps uh, incrementally on defense. But with Khalil Mack and Derek Carr, I think this is a team that is very much in a good position to succeed. Maybe not this season, but later on in the future. I don't think the impact of this draft will be felt in full this year but we're going to feel waves of it. And in the future, five, ten years from now, we're going to look back at this draft as being monumentally important, hopefully, to the organization. And I don't know, maybe this year we might actually win a couple of games, which is why my next video is my predictions for the 2014 season for the Raiders. So stick around for that. So overall, uh, incrementally improved offensively, incrementally improved defensively, uh, quite possibly the best draft the Raiders have had in decades. Now we just got to wait for time.